Okay, we're back live at Strata Conference, uh, siliconangle.com, wikibon.org's coverage, in-depth coverage live, eight hours today, eight hours yesterday, four hours on the first day. We love Strata, we love O'Reilly, those guys are kick butt here, own big data, we're here to support them and uh, bring great content to you. And I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Uh, day three for us, John, it's, uh, it's great to have Ian Fife here, who's a technology evangelist at, at Pentaho. Ian, welcome to the you. Yeah. Thanks for, for coming in. I know we had a little mix-up yesterday in terms of the time, so we appreciate you guys, you guys uh, coming on. Um, Pentaho, uh, you've got a data integration platform uh, called Kettle. Right? Correct, um, yeah. Yep. We've, we've been watching that. Uh, why don't you start by telling the audience a little bit about the company, and then we'll get into it. Okay, yeah, so Pentaho, um, we provide a complete business analytics suite, so including Kettle, you know, the data integration capability on top of that. We also provide reporting, dashboards, interactive analysis, and uh, data mining and predictive analytics. So really a complete end-to-end -end business analytics BI suite uh, based on an open source model, and then with uh, commercial products as well. So, you know, open source, I infer from that, you know, new mindset, new model. Um, we had Bill Schmarzo on before, uh, and he's got a sort of long BI history. We were talking about just the, the traditional, you know, BI space, and yeah. this, you know, a lot of KPIs and essentially rear view mirror looking type of, right. of exercises, building a lot of statistical models on top of it, and some of the challenges with that, you know, the, the goal of moving beyond reporting. Yeah. Um, what's your take on the state of the intersection between the traditional BI and this new big data movement? Yeah, I think uh, the, it's interesting. The market's changing pretty quickly with, with the rise of big data, and we were actually one of the first you know, BI companies to really uh, to start you know, dip, building out the big data capabilities. Actually, a couple of years ago, you know, we were the first vendor to support Hadoop, for example. And since then, we've been investing heavily, you know, uh, supporting all the multiple distributions of Hadoop as they've grown, and then beyond that, into the NoSQL databases, so MongoDB, uh, Apache Cassandra, uh, HBase, and so on. So really. Our goal is to be ubiquitous. So if you have a big data store, it doesn't matter whether it's Hadoop, it doesn't matter whether it's a NoSQL database, or or one of the high-performance analytic databases like a Netiza, a Vertica, um, Infobright, and so on. We can provide that glue, that data bus, to kind of glue these things together, move data between them. Um, you've got data in, in Hadoop, you want to quickly spin off a data mart, you can do that entirely through a, through a visual interface. It's all about lowering the, lowering the uh, technical barriers, making big data stores much, much easier to use. What's your sense of this? Um the goal of a single version of the truth. <laughs> Should we give up on that? Uh, are we further away than we've ever been? Uh, is it just now a single version of a distributed truth? What's your take? Yeah, I, you know, I, I know that's been a goal. It's been hard to get to. I think uh, the bottom line is, you know, the, the, the role of data marts and data warehouses is, is here to stay. You know, I don't see we're really going to move away from that. And that's really about the single version of the truth, bringing data across, you know, from different parts of the enterprise into a single consolidated data store. For, for doing analytics. And so I think that's why data integration, the ETL tools will continue to be critical to uh, you know, provide that single version of the truth. Yeah, so, um, well, let's talk about that. Um, so how's it work? I mean, you're basically um, extracting data. Um, you're, you mentioned, mentioned ETL, you're transforming it, you're cleaning it, and yep. then you're loading it into some target. Um, yep. That's sort of the way the industry does it. I presume that's the way you do it. Is there a different twist on that? Or? Yeah, that's the way we do it. But we've kind of taken it to the next level now by, you know, as we've this dramatic rise of big data. You know, now we've got multiple big data stores and uh, we, we support more big data stores than anybody else. Again, we kind of got started very early on this. Um, so we can provide this, you know, we're not just siloed. We're not just, a, for example, a Hadoop analytics vendor. You know, some of our competitors, they focus on Hadoop and they do a very good job of that. Mm -hmm. But when you try and go beyond Hadoop, you know, you're kind of stuck. So we want to provide this um, you know, kind of enterprise-wide view across big data as well as traditional data sources. So Hadoop, you mentioned uh, yeah. traditional data stores like, like Vertica. I mean, which ones don't you support? You know, it's hard to say. It's because uh, we, we are so ubiquitous. In fact, we put out a press release a few months ago because we truly believe we support more big data stores. In fact, more you know, data stores in general than any other BI vendor out there. And, and I'm, I'm intrigued by the whole open source model. It's always a discussion, and, and there's almost a, you know, gradations of, of, of open and gradations of source. So where do you fall in that, and how do you you know make money? Yeah, um, you know, it's a, it's a subscription model. 
So we have our, our, our open source you know, distributions. People, we get you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars a month. That's great. Um, you know, we want to provide very useful, usable uh, open source software. If we don't, people won't use it. And now a very small percentage of those people, you know, they're going to be looking for more. They're going to be looking for more additional functionality, capabilities, uh, mission critical support, um, you know, services and so on. And that's really where, you know, that's frankly where we make money is on that, that commercial upsell, the people who are looking for, you know, those additional capabilities and support. Ian, what's the biggest change in your business in the last, say, you know, 24 months, and, and what do you expect the biggest change to be in the next 24? I think the biggest change is uh, kind of a re reorientation of our, our corporate strategy. Very much focused now, we call them the, the, three, the three swim lanes. The first swim lane is, is kind of the traditional business analytics market or BI market. P people tend to call that business analytics now. Second swim lane is the OEM embedded market. Um, about 40% of our business is other software companies. They want BI and analytics as part of their own products. They can come to a, a company who specialize in doing that, like Pentaho, and embed that technology. The third swim lane is uh, big data. And you know, we're making a major, major strategic investment in that area. So that's really kind of broadened the footprint of the company to, to both embedding as well as big data. My question for you, I know we, I'm sorry we didn't have more time to drill down on, but I want to get your perspective on the show here at Strata. What is your walk away, take away from, from what's happening this year? Obviously, you guys are very active in the space. We know yep. you're great business partnerships. What's different this year? What's your, yeah. share with the folks out there who aren't here, what's it like and what's the big walk away? What's the big themes and your just quick high level Bang yep, out the yep, key yep. check boxes. I, you know, I would say last, last year, I think last year was a lot more about people uh, trying to understand what big data is, what does that term mean, what is Hadoop, and so on. I'm noticing quite a big change this year. People are much more educated, they're up to speed on it, uh, getting, you know, more, it's more about uh, adopt, uh, you know, how do we adopt this stuff? How do we put it into production? Um, how do we uh, use this in the context of existing databases and the existing IT infrastructure? So I think people are really starting to put this stuff into production you know, real projects now, whereas last year was much more kind of kicking the what tire. What themes are trending, so to speak, here? Um, we heard some folks say HBase is really hot. Um, what other themes have you seen that are like, wow, that's really trending hot, people are interested in? Has there any, been any surprises or, and or what you've expected? Can you share with us? Um, I think HBase definitely, you know, Hadoop continues to go from strength to strength, but I think the other theme is the NoSQL databases. You know, we, for example, we just put out an announcement with Datastacks, one of our partners. Uh, they, they are a commercial company behind Apache Cassandra. Yep. We're seeing a lot of growth, a lot of interest. That's a huge community. Um, and so they, the, you know, companies like uh, um, Datastacks and also companies like MongoDB, you know, seeing, seeing a lot of traction, a lot of growth. So that, that's what, what we're seeing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Ian, thank you very much for coming on. We're sorry we're so tight on time, but uh, it was great to have you. I'm glad we could fit you in. You're welcome. Pleasure to meet you. Yep. And uh, Thank you. Thanks okay. so much for watching. Let's keep it right here. We'll be right back after this word from